Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, coming back at you with another mech review. Uh, it's been a while, last one we did was the Timberwolf, so we are now in the clan invasion era, very exciting stuff. So I wanted to bring you our very first Lost Tech comparison. We're gonna look at one of the original Warhammer variants, the 6R, which debuted in like 2515, I believe. And we're gonna stack that up against its refitted cousin, the 7S, which was rolled out in 3050 by the Fedcom. So taking a look at two just awesome designs of an incredibly venerable mech. Uh, this mech also, by the way, up on Battleitics.com. It is in the Kickstarter in the Battlelands. So this mech, just, just awesome from the start. One of, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, dating all the way back to the 90s when you know when I got that first box set it was in there uh, just a really cool mech and that new design that uh, that they're rolling out with the Kickstarter uh, the new model is just just phenomenal really captures uh, the essence of the Warhammer I think so I uh, want to say thank you to two of our subscribers Blue Moon Lunala and Litany Against Fear thank you to both of you guys I know you've been clamoring for the Warhammer I know a few others have posted uh, some interest in it uh, so here it is, guys. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to compare the 6R to the 7S, uh, and we're going to see, is that Lost Tech, is that refit really better? Is it worth the BV? They're more expensive, um, but is it going to give you more punch? So we're going we're gonna to check it out. We're going to dive into the numbers, run it through all of our favorite gauntlets and see. So stick around, stay tuned. This mech comparison is coming right up. All right, guys, let's dive in with the Warhammer 6R. So uh, this is a 70 ton inner sphere heavy mech. It has a battle value of 1,299. Now this mech was produced in 2515. Uh, so that puts it way back in the Star League era. And it was really pervasive throughout the inner sphere, uh, including periphery mercenaries. Every great house had them. Uh, according to the lore, they were produced in uh, very few numbers, but they were easy to maintain. They were very uh, sturdy mechs, so uh, they lasted uh, quite a long period of time. Now, I looked it up on the master unit list, and while it doesn't explicitly say that they go extinct, uh, there really isn't any trace of them past the early Republic era. So I'm guessing some of those new Warhammers, like the 10s and the 11s, uh, started to replace these older models. But uh, still... This mech, tough as nails, very venerable, as I had said. This thing has just been around forever uh, in the lore. So let's talk about the tech specs. Uh, it moves 4.6, has no jump capability, so pretty respectable for a heavy mech. It has 18 heat sinks. Uh, the other tech's pretty standard, so fusion engine, uh, no ferrofibrous, no end of steel, none of that stuff. Again, this is a uh, Succession Wars error primarily chassis, so it has that level of tech on it. Uh, armor clocks in at 10 tons, so that's 160 points, uh, which is right around 73% coverage, which is, again, fairly standard in terms of what you see for stock mechs of this time. If you look at the center diagram where it shows the armor distribution, the first thing that jumps out is the legs are woefully under-armored. The arms, which carry those valuable PPCs, on the other hand, are over-armored. So a little bit of a trade-off there. Uh, we'll have to see how that pans out in the defensive sim. Uh, no hand actuators on this mech, obviously. It's just got giant guns instead, which is far cooler. Uh, and also alongside those PPCs, it packs two medium lasers, two small lasers, two machine guns, and an SRM-6. So that means it has that, <laughs> that highly volatile machine gun ammo, uh, which is unfortunately placed in the center torso. Uh, some people think it's a good idea to put ammo in the center torso. I'll go off on a, on a tangent here for a minute. Uh, it's generally terrible. Statistically, the center torso is the place you are going to get hit the most. Uh, and on this particular mech, if you look, it is, uh, it's under-armored compared to the side torso. So I just always hate stuffing ammo in the CT, but uh, some people like to do it. I don't. But here it is on the Warhammer. Poor guy. Uh, ammo for the SRM, on the other hand, is stored in the right torso. Now, on the Warhammer 7S, 
Obviously same tonnage, 70 tons, inner sphere heavy mech, but the battle value is 1,477. So that's 178 BV more than uh, the 6R. So that is, uh, you know, that's, that's substantial. That's, that's nothing insignificant. And then of course, this is base battle value. So when you start stacking on, you know, the piloting and gunnery improvements, even if you're playing this thing at a 3-4, that's a 30% improvement. Um, it, it can add up quickly, right? So uh, 178 base more than the 6R. Now, uh, the 7S, first notable thing, it is equipped with double heat sinks. So this is a godsend for a mech pack and twin PPCs. Uh, as we know, 18 is not gonna cut it. You can't even fire both PPCs and move without generating a significant amount of heat, you know, three to four points depending. Uh, so this mech definitely takes care of that problem. Uh, it does not have anything else though. No endo steel, no ferrofibrous, no sensors. It's just, you know, no XL engine. It's just basically the same exact mech uh, fitted with double heat sinks and some advanced weaponry, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so armor mass, the same 10 tons, which is still 160 points. It's distributed in the exact same way as the 6R. Um, now in terms of when this mech debuted, uh, I will I, I will I will speak to that for just a moment. So this mech debuted in 3050. This is a refit through and through, um, and it was you know debuted just in time for the clan invasion. Saw so lots of action, and again you know it goes up to that early Republic period, and then it sort of disappears off the charts. Uh, it doesn't explicitly say that it goes extinct, so it's probably still out there, um, but at least production or, or any notable uh, development on this chassis, and this variant of the chassis sort of stops there. Um, so anyway, let's look at the weapons real quick here. So on the right side, the regular PPCs of the 6R replaced with two ER PPCs. Uh, the medium lasers replaced with pulse lasers. And the SRMs, um, well there was an SRM-6 that gets replaced with dual SRM-2s, which also take the place of the machine guns as well in that left and right torso. Uh, and it still has that pair of small lasers to round out the armament. Now the cool thing is we've gone from two different types of ammo utilizing weapons down to one type uh, and, a, and a ton of SRM ammo gets you 50 shots which is more than enough to feed two launchers and considering their streaks you're only shooting if you hit so again we've we were able to reduce the ammo down from two tons to one um, so that's that's definitely beneficial there for this mech again we'll see how that plays out in the defensive sim but why don't we dive into the offense and uh, take a look at the numbers. So on the top half here, we're looking at the 6R. On the bottom, we're looking at the 7S here for the heat and damage benchmarks, respectively. Um, so the first thing that jumps out at me, if you look at the heat benchmark, uh, there is a substantial difference on the 6R between the baseline and the red line. Um, and you can see the heat climbs to 30 pretty much immediately, um, you know, once, once it gets those other weapons in range. And it even starts climbing um, after turn one, right? Turn two, you're building up three heat, you know, six heat, you start taking on movement penalties, gunnery penalties, damage starts to drop off. And that's because those 18 heat sinks are simply woefully inadequate uh, to support two PPCs. You go down, you look at the 7S, uh, the red line and the baseline are basically lockstep identical, meaning that this mech is probably oversunk all the way up until uh, about seven inches, six inches, which is like, what, turn uh, turn seven, turn eight. Um, and so, you know, again, once it gets its full weapon load into play, it can start generating some heat. Uh, but until that point, it can fire both of those PPCs, which again, the ER PPCs are going to, they're going to build up more. They're building up 15 heat per pop. So that's 30 heat. It can still handle all of that, which is pretty great. Um, I think at the end of the day, the mech has just the right number of heat sinks the pulse lasers, the streak SRM twos, you know, you can play real smart with it. Um, and it's very easy to just lay off one of those PPCs and bleed off all of your heat almost instantly in a round. Uh, so I, I think it's really well designed in that regard. Um, and that's reflected in the damage benchmark. So in the top, uh, you can see that the, the 6R, I mean, it still pumps out decent amount of damage for a Succession Wars era chassis, um, you know, not too bad. And uh, you can pump a little bit of extra damage out of it by taking on some heat, right? Especially at the closer ranges. But you can see how that damage sort of peaks and drops off, right? Um, 
And that's just because, again, at those further ranges, it just doesn't have the heat sinks to support all the heat load. Looking at the 7S, it's a very different picture. Um, in fact, the optimizer, there's really not a whole lot of room to optimize it until you get into close range and you can bring all your weapons to bear. Um, but there is definitely room to, to bring it up, um, you know, by about 5 to 6% or so over the 12 turn period. Um, and all in all, you know, when we look at these numbers here, um, the baseline damage on the 7S, just the baseline. So this, uh, again, this is, uh, we set it so that the mechs don't build any more than four points of heat. That's the maximum they're allowed to build up. It, it builds up 52% more, uh, I'm sorry, deals 52% more damage, the 7S, than the 6R. That's, that's incredible. Um, that's a huge bump in damage. Again, this is just the baseline damage in our offensive benchmark, but that's still, that's, that's impressive. So 125 versus 190. And you can see it's basically the same trend in the optimized damage as well. Um, and the red line damage is, is vastly different. It's almost 300% more. Um, and, and that's because, again, you know, it's got such great heat dissipation. So that tells me if I'm a new player, I'm, I'm introducing someone to the game, and I want to give them a, a fun mech that's friendly and can deal a ton of damage, the 7S is a great choice. The 6R, not so much. Um, so pretty cool to see um, how these two mechs stacked up offensively. Now, on the lethality side, I think it's pretty much the same story. Um, what stuck out here was, if you look at the damage per hit, the, um, the 7S is able to deliver so much more damage per hit because it's able to bring so much more to bear, um, and that's, that's notable. Um, the lethality, uh, I'm sorry, the critical hits on the lethality, it was interesting that the, um, the 6R actually had more critical hits, and I think that's when I look at the weapons groupings, which of course isn't displayed here, um, but when I look at the weapons groupings, it's firing many more of those smaller weapons, whereas the 7S is able to rely on those big cannons. So you're doing more damage with them, um, but you're just generating, uh, you're generating more crits, obviously, when you're firing more weapons, um, you have more, more opportunities and things like that, right? It's the old the sort of SRM spray versus, you know, a Gauss rifle. Um, so anyway, uh, in terms of time to kill, uh, so this is the time to kill the target mech, which is a Javelin, uh, and the, uh, the 6R did it in about 10.8 turns, the 7S did it in 8.3 turns, so two turns sooner. That's a big difference in a, in a game of Battletech. Um, you know, that, that's, uh, it's really two and a half turns almost. That's substantial. When you're thinking about objective-based games, or even just a straight-up slugfest, that's an extra two turns. You can take that 7S and turn it at something else. Um, pretty interesting to see. So um, at the end of the day, uh, the, the other lethality metrics aren't really too telling. I mean, I thought it was interesting that the, um, the 6R had more engine kills than the, uh, than the 7S, and that's a byproduct of the fact, again, of generating more crits, more sort of shotgun-type weapons, small lasers, SRMs, uh, machine guns, things like that, versus the 7S, which is just drilling this thing with these big PPCs uh, and just shredding through the CT. Um, so anyway, that's basically how the lethality shakes out. Pretty interesting stuff to see. Um, let's check out the defensive side. Uh, I was very interested to see these numbers. Uh, the Warhammer, even though in the fluff it's supposed to be this super reliable mech, it like almost always dies for me. Uh, <laughs> as, as evidenced in the last campaign. Uh, God, poor Firestorm. Uh, so anyway, I digress. Uh, how do these mechs stack up? Well, they're very similar. Um, so motive hit-wise, uh, you notice that the 7S um, has more motive hits just slightly more, but that's it's, it's substantial enough to be noticeable than the 6R. Why is that? Because they are identically armored. Um, the, the difference is in the fact that because the 7S is using double heat sinks, it cannot fit anything in the legs, which is an interesting sort of uh, side effect of using inner sphere double heat sinks. So you can't pack out the legs with criticals, uh, whereas on the 6S, I'm sorry, the 6R, which has just your standard heat sinks, it has those uh, those roll agains padded out with heat sinks, so you're less likely to get you know a foot actuator, a leg actuator, or something along those lines. Interesting, um, but overall, it didn't really play too much into the survivability. The 7S out survived uh, the 6R, 
Uh, why is that? Well, I mean, really, it just comes down to ammunition. Um, I looked at it. I looked at it again, and really, um, the way the simulation is looking at this is, you know, those ammo kills. It's just cumulative. It's it's you know, it, it, you can see 14% versus 5%, um, and some of that's eaten up by CT kills on the 7S. But really, at the end of the day, it's those it's those ammo kills. It's the extra spot on that left torso. Um, you know, where that ammo lives, um, or was it right torso? So either way, um, you know, where that SRM ammo lives on the 6R. And so, you know, that that's really what this shakes down to. That's evidenced in the cumulative survivability. Um, so if you look at those two graphs, right, the top one being the 6R, bottom being the 7S, what you want to look for is that sort of purplish area in between the bright pink, which represents engine kills, and the red, which represents your standard CT head core. Um, and the purple area on the uh, on the 6R is notably bigger starting all the way back at you know turn uh, you know turn 7 and then turn 8 turn 9 turn 10 all the way through to turn 12 you can see it just kind of stacks up and up um, if you look at it um, and you actually you know you had the math in front of you it's it starts at about a three percent deviation and goes all the way to six percent uh, at the end so you know that that's what makes up for it and that's big, you know, I mean, you're like, oh, 6% doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, if I told you one in 20 times, you know, that you play your mech is more likely to be alive, you know, that's a, you know, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big buff. And so the 64 to 70% may not sound like a lot, but uh, to me that, you know, that's the difference between winning a game and, and losing a game in some cases. Um, so let's take all the defensive stuff, we'll pile it on top of the offensive stuff and look at the efficiency. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. We're going to determine if that loss tech and that hike in BV is really worth it. So we're going to look at the efficiency, which is going to take, again, our offensive scores, our defensive scores, and kind of roll them all in together with the battle value and get us some numbers. Now, the first thing we want to look at is the effectiveness benchmark or production benchmark. Basically, how much can this thing churn out based on its survivability? So we take the the optimized ACD and we overlay survivability on that uh, and what we're getting is that purple area. So again, the first thing that jumps out at me here on the 6R, you really have that jagged peak and valley type um, damage curve at long range indicative of uh, just overloaded heat sinks and the inability to consistently fire the 7S very smooth all the way in. Um, the survivability again on that 7S just slightly better as well. So that's gonna play into this equation. Uh, but at the end of the day, they both have very similar survivability curves. Uh, it's just that that 7S again, just slightly better courtesy of the ammunition. So when we look at the damage loss, this is a percentage figure based on uh, the area lost between the blue, which is the optimized damage, and the purple, which is the effective. Again, that's taking into account your survivability. It was 17.1% on the 6R and 13.4% on the 7S. So the lower the number, the better. That means you're you're losing less damage, you're bleeding less damage here. Um, so the 7S definitely better um, at you know being more reliable over time, surviving more, being able to bring more firepower to bear. Um, when we go to the bottom there and we look at just the various efficiency metrics. So on the left-hand side is a bar chart, just comparing. We looked at the optimized, we looked at the baseline, the effective ACD. So what is the total over the 12 turns? It was 111.7 for the 6R. It was 173.1 for the 7S. Um, so that's a 54% difference in damage. That is, again, substantial. It's very similar. I believe the baseline we said was 52%. So now the, the 7S is starting to eke ahead a little bit more, again, courtesy of the survivability. So uh, when we look at the final efficiency score, you'll see that the 6R is a 6.14, the 7S is an 8.37. So first and foremost, a 6.14 is a very, very good score for a Succession Wars era mech. Uh, it's not bad at all. You're gonna see very few mechs in the sevens and even less uh, in the eights and beyond. Most of the mechs are in the you know four fives and sixes. Again, sprinkling some in in the seven. So six point one, bottom line, very solid. Uh, Eight point three seven is excellent. That's really good bang for buck. Uh, I was actually really surprised this mech was that good with a seventy percent survivability score. I mean, you could probably mod this thing. Just get the ammo out of the center torso. 
um, you know, maybe even get rid of the streaks altogether and, uh, and just pad it with some more armor. Because again, it's only sitting at 10 tons. Uh, I think you can go up to 14 tons, if I'm not mistaken, on a 70 ton chassis. Um, and that would put it at about 100% coverage. That would make a world of difference if you could free up um, all of that. And I mean, the thing would just be implacable. Um, but regardless, an 8.37, still phenomenal. Uh, still really, really good. So essentially, this factors in the battle value. So if they were equal, you know, it was like, well, you know, this one costs more, but at the same, at the end of the day, you're getting the same productivity. You would see the same efficiency score. The fact that this one uh, is, if there's a 27% difference, I think, uh, between you know 8.3 8 and 6.1, something like that. So basically, it's a, it's 27% better um, per per point of battle value. The 7S is better than the 6R. So that says something there. So the Lost Tech does seem to be worth it, uh, just in, in my candid opinion. I think maybe you guys knew that, but it's not always the case. Um, sometimes the you know the less costly mechs are more efficient, right? You just, um, you know, you don't need all the bells and whistles. But in this case, it's a really well-designed chassis. Um, it can handle the heat. It can deliver the damage. It can stay in the fight. So pretty good so far. Um, on the right-hand side, we'll, we'll take a look at gunnery score sensitivity. Uh, there isn't a tremendous story to tell here, except for the fact that you'll notice the peak on, uh, so the lighter colored line, first of all, is the uh, is the 6R, right? Um, I'm sorry, the lighter colored line is actually the 7S, right? That, that one is is more efficient, so it's got a higher, you know, higher there in the in the, in the chart. But um, you'll notice that the slope from gunnery three to two is much steeper on that mech than it is um, on the 6R. But at the end of the day, um, the 6R was in fact more sensitive, just mildly. But really, there's not there's not a great story to tell here with the data. Um, this is pretty much what you expect to see uh, across the board. These guys um, not tremendously um, sensitive uh, to a gunnery score improvement. Um, the data tells us that it's actually better to put, um, if you want to spend the points, it's better to put a better pilot in the 6R. I think that's a byproduct of two things. One, the fact that it is a little bit cheaper, again, 178 BV cheaper. Um, and two, the fact that maybe the survivability is just slightly lower. Um, and, and so all of these things sort of factor into the sensitivity. Um, but frankly, um, if it were me and it were my army, I would absolutely put the better gunner um, in your 7S, even if, you know, I mean, because you can see, I mean, the efficiency is just plain better anyway. Um, so that that is kind of how that shakes out. Um, but all that said, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at um, the threat analysis and the roles. And we're going to do this one at a time. Um, I debated on doing a side by side, but there was just so much data. Uh, we're going to do that one at a time. So we're going to start with the 6R. All right, so um, what you'll notice here on the threat analysis is, um, although I didn't do them side by side, I did include some reference metrics. So you'll see in the left-hand side there at the top, printing out all of the um, sort of the key metrics that we've pulled out of the Battleytics analysis. And the, the metrics for this particular mech, so the Warhammer 6R is what we're looking at right now. You'll see, for example, optimized damage is 134.8, and then next to it in red, it says minus 65. That gives you a reference point. It's doing 65 points of damage less for that particular metric than uh, what we're comparing it against, which is the Warhammer 7S. So um, let's run through these and we'll, we'll, we'll sort of take a look at it both in comparison to the 7S and as a standalone mech in the Succession Wars era where it belongs. So the optimized ACD, again, 134.8. That's really good. Um, time to kill 10.7. So really, um, this is right on par with most heavy mechs in the Succession Wars era. Redline heat was 201. This is blisteringly hot. Uh, it's not good. This mech definitely has room to be optimized uh, in that regard, which would probably increase its damage output as well. Uh, movement, pretty good. Average target mod, 1.8. So this is basically factoring in over the defensive simulator, all the actuator hits, legs blown off, everything else. Um, this was basically identical to the 7S. Even though the 7S had uh, some more actuator hits, it was really only a difference at the hundredth decimal place. So these mechs were basically identical uh, for the average target mod. The survival rate was 64.3%. That's not great. It's not terrible. Um, we've seen better, uh, but we've also seen a lot worse. So this is somewhere it's probably acceptable for a 70 ton mech, you know, in this era. 
Uh, so damage loss was 17.1%. It's really not, it's, it's, it's not horrible. Um, I'd say most mechs are around 10%. So this mech saw a, a higher degree of damage loss. And I think that's because it struggles to deal damage at longer range. Most of its punch, at least for the 6R, does come in once you get closer. Uh, sensitivity here, 656. Uh, again, you know, good sensitivity is in like is 0 0.7, 0 0.75 and above. So this isn't terrible, but it's not really saying you absolutely must put your best pilot in this mech. Um, and then efficiency at 6.14. So again, as we mentioned, that's actually really good for this era. Uh, I think some of the better mechs are in the sevens, but you know, solid mechs are, are, are things in the sixes and fives. Um, so 6.14 sure, uh, surely is uh, something that, that is, it's reliable. Um, but as I mentioned before, I really feel like this mech could be improved upon. Um, it has a 52 point alpha strike at close range. So looking at the threat assessment, that's the dark red bars, right? So that's showing you if you fired everything, hit with everything, landed every single uh, cluster in a missile, etc., how much damage would you do? This mech peaks at 52 points of damage at, at three inches or three hexes. So that's not terrible. Um, in fact, it's pretty, it's pretty high. Um, it's higher, in fact, than the 7S, which I believe is at 46 points. So what's the issue? Well, the issue for me is this. The white area represents our zero heat ACD. Uh, that zero heat ACD means at that given range, right, it's not cumulative, it's not a simulation, it's just like in a vacuum, I shoot at 10 inches. I don't want to build up any heat. How much average damage am I going to do? What's my alpha strike potential? And then the bright red area is what's my maximum ACD? So that's like if you take your alpha strike and then multiply it by uh, the percent chance that you have to hit for each weapon, right, based on that range, what do you get? I don't see a lot of differentiation between the white area and the red area. And that tells me that the currency that I'm spending, which is heat, isn't really giving me a huge return on my investment, um, especially as you get further down the pipe. So like at nine inches, once all that short range weaponry comes into play, you can build up something like 13, 14, 15 points of heat um, as you get closer and closer. And, you know, you're not gaining that much more. I mean, you're gaining maybe 50% of your damage, which isn't a ton. It's just it's just not there for me. Um, and so when I think about building 15 points of heat up, which is astronomical, um, you know, you're looking at, at, you know, shutdown checks and movement penalties and gunnery penalties. You're not quite in ammo territory yet, but that's just one round of shooting. You stack all that stuff up. You do that for a couple rounds. You're basically shutting yourself down and out of the game. And there's just not a big return there. Um, so unless you're looking, you know, staring down the barrel at an immobile target or something along those lines, even though you have such a huge alpha strike potential in this mech, it's just not really there for me um, in terms of, you know, the, the heat. The heat is really the killer um, of, this, of this particular variant. Now, when we look at the threat envelope, uh, this mech has great coverage, right? It has those PPCs on each arm, so it can, it, you know, can torso twist, you can shoot behind you, um, you know, you can, you can shoot in your left and right arcs respectively. Um, you can do a lot of great things when you have big guns on your arms, um, and they're well armored, so they're, they're less likely to fall off, which is pretty cool. And of course, it's got a blistering array of weapons uh, aimed in those front arcs as well across the torsos, so pretty cool there. Um, so, when I think about the role analysis for this particular chassis, I'm very reluctant to put it um, in a frontline role. I selected frontline, but it was my third choice. Um, my first choice for this mech is really a second line mech. So kind of hang it in the back, fire those PPCs, take on a little bit of heat because you don't need to move as much. Um, and then once the enemy has locked onto and it is engaging something bigger, that's when I think the Warhammer can close in and unleash a barrage of short range weapons without the PPCs, keep that heat under control, um, and, you know, do some damage. Uh, I think that's where this mech can succeed. Um, it also can exceed, succeed in a brawler role, so same thing, but just getting it in quick and hard. Um, you know, use those PPCs one at a time just to kind of cover your approach, um, eh, you know, but at the end of the day, I, I think there are probably better brawlers out there, but this mech certainly, again, you know, it's got two mediums, an SRM-6, two smalls, machine guns, so, um, and, you know, it can get the job done for sure, um, especially if you're playing the rapid fire rule with the machine guns. I mean, you can just churn out so much damage um, at the expense of heat, of course, with this mech is terrible at dealing with. But <laughs> uh, and then lastly is the frontline role. So 
um, you know, when I think about a frontline mech, I think about, um, you know, mechs like, uh, you know, like a Zeus or like a Grasshopper where, the, you know, it can take fire, it can deliver some long range punch. Um, you know, it's good at every range. Um, it's got good defense, you know, so they can kind of get in there and mix it up. Um, I think this mech can do that. Again, the killer for me is the heat. It just has so much trouble um, managing that heat. But I guess if you're just firing one PPC and a couple of the short range weapons, you know, you can get the job done. But, you know, again, even with even with 18 heat sinks, you fire one PPC, you know, two mediums and the SRM-6 and you run, you're already building up heat, which is, to me, it's like bizarre. But um, that's how they designed the mech. So again, heat's the killer. If I was going to play this mech, I would absolutely mod it. When I play Succession Wars era Warhammers, I, I go with a modified 6K. Um, and in fact, I downgrade that SRM-6 to an SRM-4 and add even more heat sinks. Um, you got to be able to move and fire those PPCs, in my opinion. Otherwise, you're paying all this, all these BB points for, for something you just can't use. So that's that. Let's look at the 7S, though. 7S is a little bit of a different story for me. I actually really, really like this mech. Um, let's go through the metrics first. So the optimized ACD, 199.8. That's that's really good. Even for um, the clan invasion era, uh, I think that's a really solid number. 8.93 time to kill. It's okay. It's not it's not mind-blowingly good, um, like, you know, two Gauss rifles type of good, but it, it's, still, it's still pretty great. I mean, the, the crappy thing about inner sphere ER PPCs is you're not getting any extra damage out of them, right? It's just still the same 10 damage. You're, you're building up 15 heat, um, and yeah, you get a little bit of range, which is, you know, which is helpful. Um, you know, it's it's useful, it's meaningful, um, but I don't know. I almost feel like on the inner sphere side, like regular PPCs are are the way to go, um, and you know, save that save that heat and everything else. But regardless, that's a that's an analysis for another day. Um, so redline heat though, this mech, courtesy of those double heat sinks, 36 uh, points of heat dissipation per turn. Uh, over the 12 turn uh, red line benchmark can only build up 73 points of heat, which is like, that's like novice player can, can hop in this thing and just hold down the trigger um, and have a lot of fun and still do a ton of damage. Um, movement and average target mod, we talked about this already, uh, and then survival rate. So this was up 5.7% over uh, the 6R, so the 7S surviving at an even 70%. Uh, damage loss was pretty good, 13.4%. Again, I don't know what it is with these Warhammers. Um, most of the mechs that we've looked at are around, I think, around that 10% number. Um, maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, but um, I feel like um, this mech could probably do a little bit better there of, of conserving. But again, the 70% survival isn't it's not great for, for a 70 ton mech. I mean, I, th I think I would expect it to be a little bit higher, but it's only packing 10 tons of armor. You know, if you compare it to a grasshopper, which is a beast, that thing's again, 14 tons of armor. So uh, that's a bit of a disparity there. And it does have that weird distribution where the arms have tons of armor and the CT is like down almost at like, I think it was like, it's uh, just over 50% armor um, on that particular section. So a uh, sort of a weird distribution there. I think all of that kind of contributes all right, anyway, um, sensitivity, mediocre, 5.6, or 0.56, and then the efficiency was tremendous uh, at 8.37. That's a really, really strong number. That's like competing with like the next-gen Marauders uh, and a lot of the clan mechs, too. Um, and in fact, beating some of the clan mechs um, handedly. So in 8.37, you're getting a lot of bang for buck. This mech, uh, again, not costing a whole lot. You know, 14, uh, 1477, I think, was where it was at. And then, um, you know, you, you increase that with a, with a pretty decent pilot, uh, some, you know, some enhancements to gunnery score. You can get, get a monster on your hands for sure. Um, so let's look at the threat assessment below. So um, the one thing that you'll notice here on the threat assessment is the mech is built, the yellow triangles are heat. There's no heat build until you get into six inches or six hexes. Um, and that's where those those pulse lasers come in and those things can generate a ton of heat But they do a lot of damage. You got that minus two mod to hit which really helps you um, Knock those hits home. Um, so, you know, I mean the thing can really generate some damage and when you look at the heat build Versus the alpha strike potential um, You know for this one maybe once or twice You might want to pull the trigger if you fire everything and build up seven points of heat You're not looking at a gunnery penalty the following turn um, you know, you're, you are taking on a movement penalty, which, you know, hurts when you're only a, a four, six movement profile, but 
Again, this is something I can, I can manage, especially when I have 36 heat dissipation. All I have to do is lay off a couple of the weapons, not even necessarily the PPCs, and I can dissipate all that heat down, um, you know, pr pretty handedly, right? So if you fire both PPCs and you walk, you can still bleed off five points of heat if, if I'm doing my math right. I think I am. Um, so, you know, that's not bad. Uh, so this mech, again, there's not a huge disparity between the zero heat ACD and the maximum ACD. You know, it's only a couple of points, but if you're willing to roll the dice, take the risk, you have a good shot, I would say go for it. Um, we talked about this earlier. What's interesting is the Alpha Strike substantially less, uh, you know, uh, maybe not substantially, but 52 to 46, it's, uh, you know, that, that's notable enough uh, between the, the 6R and the 7S. But again, the 7S just makes up for it in the ability to fire more, more consistently, more reliably. Um, and that's just why this mech is better. And that technology, that lost tech, just makes this mech better, period. Um, another thing that's really cool, I think I might have hit on this earlier, is those SRM2s right? You either hit or you don't, um, but you don't have to shoot it if you don't hit, right? So that's kind of cool. You save the ammo, you save the heat, right? The, so the pre-lock, if you will, uh, I think that's a great ability um, for these mechs as well. Um, and that, all of that stuff sort of contributes to the heat efficiency of, of this mech. Um, now on the threat envelope, the one thing you'll notice uh, is this tremendously different is the range, right? Those ER PPCs can shoot a hell of a lot farther than a regular PPC, that's why this mech's killing the Javelin quicker in the lethality test. It's why it's just gonna be more efficient overall because you're able to put out more damage sooner, more reliably. Your mods are gonna be a little bit lower um, because again, you're shooting further, so your range brackets are broader. Um, all of these things are, are sort of contributing to, uh, to the success here of this mech. Um, and same as the other, you know, it still has a fairly strong forward arc of fire. Um, so pretty good stuff overall here. Now, when I think about the roles for this particular mech, um, what would I do? Well, you know, at the end of the day, it really really is the same three roles. It's a brawler, um, it's a second line mech, and it's a front line mech. You know, some people might say, well, Aaron, why aren't, you know, why not fire support? Eh, I mean, could you play a fire support role? Sure, you got a couple of PPCs, but um, at the end of the day, this mech is just so much more. Those medium pulse lasers and SSRMs are begging to be used you have to use them to get your points for this mech. You got to push this mech up. Um, and I think, you know, this mech could start in a frontline role. Um, if I were going to play this mech, and I would, uh, I mean, I would scrap the small lasers and put them in the trash can and throw another ton of armor on this thing. That is going to increase the battle value. Uh, but I mean, I would armor the CT up. I would put more armor on those side torsos if I could. Probably peel a little bit off the rear too. That looked over armored to me. Um, but I'd redistribute that armor, and I bet you this mech can march through fire and be absolutely fine. So frontline is kind of my first choice for this particular variant. Whereas with the 6R, frontline would kind of be the last thing I think I would do, or I don't know, maybe brawler would be the last thing. But certainly that the, the inflection point here is this mech is way more capable of taking the damage and staying in the fight, I think, than the 6R. Um, <clears throat> just overall, I think it's going to be able to deliver more damage. It's going to bring its targets down quickly. All of this is going to contribute um, to even greater survivability. So at the end of the day, they're both playing the same roles, uh, but I would be more aggressive with the 7S. Both of them are great mechs. Both of them are a lot of fun. I think the 7S is much better for novice players. It's going to be much easier to play with the better heat dissipation. Um, but the 6R is a classic, you can't deny. Uh, I know a lot of people out there love this mech. But guys, interested in your opinions on these mechs, that's all I got. I'm tapped out of ideas and opinions. Um, but thanks so much for watching. As always, we appreciate it. Please don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on Instagram at DFAWarGaming.com. Check out Battleytics online at www.battleytics.com. If I didn't say it already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I think 50% of you guys that are watching aren't subscribing. That's what that's what web that's what YouTube analytics tells me. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe. You know it means a lot to us and it helps out the channel, helps us to produce more content. Uh, but all that said, guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Have a great night. Stay tuned because always a lot of great stuff coming from Death from Above Wargaming.